It was late in the afternoon. I was hanging out in Basie Park, about to start my shift. Prince and Malik rolled up in Prince Black BMW. Malik got out. He came over to me. He said, yo, come on, get in the car. We got to go somewhere. Malik reached back, handed me a shiny 9mm pistol. He said, here, hold this. I took the gun. What's up? He said, we're going to take you someplace. When we get there, we're going to point somebody out to you. And when we do, you're going to shoot him in the head. Money conversations. We've been making business moves. Contemplating how to get it. Need to get in tune. Different topics. We got options. You can pick and shoot. If more income ain't the outcome, gotta switch the mood We tryna help you to improve, thanks for asking Wrote the riches, speak on broker days and past tense Wealthy habits, lately I just wanna stack chips Took a risk and we been running up a bag since G vast quest, quick to make a couple G's Detox, spin knowledge, put you on your feet Bug out, got the plate, make sure to pray before you eat At the table with the winners, come and take a seat Yo, 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 what up, what up? For the next episode of Thanks For Asking, we got a real good treat for y'all this time, boy. We got my man, Corey Pugis. He gonna tell a story. So yo, Detox, yo, drop that shit, boy. Round of applause. Yeah. Yo, Corey, what up, man? Right. Yeah, what it's up, what up? a pleasure you coming down in here, man, and doing, and doing us this honor. Um, yeah, just straight to it. <laughs> just get, yeah, let's get straight to it, man. What's yo, most dangerous thing? Yo, what's the most dangerous thing you've seen on the force, man? I know you got a, you got a lot to talk about, chop, chop but that was on my up. mind doing all this research and shit like that, yeah. man. Yo, the most violent, the most violent thing I seen in the police department. I was a young cop, like in maybe '96, '95, where this dude was in a relationship with this woman. He was beating, like, he was beating her really bad, like, breaking her jaw and everything. He went to jail, got locked up, they had three kids. He came out of jail. She had an order of protection. She allowed him to come see the kids. And one of the kids told him, like, this guy been coming to see mommy, and he just flipped out. He cut his girl's head off. Wow. Wait, 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 wow. wait, wait. Cut her head cut off. Cut her head off? Chopped her head off, put it in the bedroom. Chopped off a four year wow. old, oh I think a six year old, and a nine year old who called 911. You could hear the thumping on the floor, and he was trying to kill him. Then all wow. of a sudden, the phone just went down. Yeah, yeah. So he wow. got everybody. Yeah, for I think the most his name part. is Mark Timmons. I'll never forget that yeah. name. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. This dude was bugging. And then when the police bust into his room, bust the door down, he was sitting in the living room with two little slits like he tried to kill himself on it. Right, it wasn't even no major shit going on, right? <laughs> like, yo, now you ready Pump. to kill, you can't live yeah. yourself. Nah, but he said it was little Pump. slits, ain't yeah. that? Yeah. Like, he it, it was even blush, it so. right. You got these yeah, little yeah, shits, yeah, uh, yeah, little yeah, bitch yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And you wanted to probably pop him at the time, yeah. right? Yeah, Basically. man, punk. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. That's crazy. The streets raised me. Because when I hit, when I- You see the subtitle, the subtitle of my book, We'll get into the street, the law, two worlds, one man. So, like, that's why I love Jay Z mm -hmm. and, and Boo Boo, who grew up with 50, yeah, 50 Cent, yeah. you know? Them dudes hustle. Like, when you in these streets and you deep in these streets, you weren't about the police setting you up, yeah. your girl setting you up, your man setting you up. Say, so somebody offers your mom's 50000 depending on what she doing, she might set you up. Right. So, like, yeah. it's crazy. So now I get out of all of that, and now, because everything is a hustle. You're a hustle yeah. in the street. Mm -hmm. I hustled, went to the army, hustled army, hustled police department. Now I'm hustling books. Mm -hmm. Who are really TV right now. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, like, I watch them dudes, man. It's, yeah. it's, everything is a hustle. You know, it's mm -hmm. the foundation. You know, I remember I became a cop and I would be on the wall all the time. You know, and I see, you'll see cops outside. I'll be bugging. They be at the sidewalk. Like, the, the stores are here. They be at the sidewalk. And when I was in the streets, it's left, right, front. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't run behind me. Yeah. So I'm playing the wall all day. We learn that in the street. Mm -hmm. I'm leaning against the wall. I got to see you coming. It's left, right, front. Yeah. And I see these cops. They standing at the sidewalk. Right, yeah. These, yeah, you about to get... Because they ain't got no street vernacular. Yeah, they don't even understand yeah. what it is. It's but you're in the streets, though. That's the crazy part. Like Yeah, but the police department don't really teach you that type yeah. of I mean, they teach you some... Basic thing, but they can't. They can't right, out police right. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit going out the door once they get yeah. on there. And then. You gotta really just think about. I mean, y'all, come on, we all from yeah. cut from the same cloth. Yeah, you survive these streets. Yeah, yo, yo, my first job was one eighteen or something. 
for the audience. Did you work over there? We on one sixteen and stuff. So my first job was just was, I, my first job was the Supreme team. I worked on one eighteen and stuff to right the triangle. You didn't make the left, you mm-hmm. bust the left yeah. little yeah. triangle. Yeah. That was my first job. People would always be like, "Yo, Supreme thing, who you talking about your first job?" I said, "Cause we work Monday through Friday. Yeah. We got it. We got paid on Fridays, yeah. and I can never get a day off. Yeah, it's just, it was a job." And yeah. then you got Prem is the president, Prince is the vice president. Then you got the consiglia, you know, right, back right. judge, pre, you know, whatever. It the was a job. Was, yeah, yeah, it was. It sounded like the, the way you explained it in the book. And see, it's worse than a job because a job, you can get a day off. This shit is like, yeah, I, remember my you know girl, I remember when my girl got blessed with her first wife. She died for breast cancer. Oh, she was turning God. 16. I was like, yo. I take my girl. I was gonna take her to City Island, get a limo. Mm, you know how we mm. do. It's like, nah. I say, yo, my girl turned sixteen. I can't take her out. It's like, nah. You ain't got nobody to cover. You got work. God damn. Yeah, it was like wow. that. Man. Wow. So, um, take me to the beginning, man. I, I'm, um, what was it? What was it like growing up in in your household? Because you said you had your mother and father mm-hmm. for a short time. Yeah. But um, just break that part down for me. <clears throat> yeah, so like growing up, it was cool. Mm-hmm. You know, mother, father, sisters, you know, I'm the only brother, the only boy. You know, white picket fence, car, yeah. 79 Caprice. You know what I'm wow. saying? Is that in Queens? <laughs> Is that out here in Queens? Plenum, Plenum. That's out here in Queens? In Queens, 198 in Murdoch. 198 in Murdoch. Oh, yeah. yeah, on the north side. What was your mom's so, like? My mom was loving. She was good. You know, so my mother and my father is not educated. My grandmother was not educated. You know, they was all from the South. My father was from Florida. My mother was from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Uh, My mother was married previous. So, like, my first three sisters is with her husband. And then me and my little sister after with with my father. Um, But she was very loving. Mm -hmm. You know, she did the best she could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we was good. My mother, all I know my whole life, she was on welfare. Mm. And it took me 40 years to figure out why she was on welfare and why my last name is Pegues. You know, you read the book. So yeah. my father's last name is Sloan. My mother's last name is Capel. And my name is Pegues. So Capel was her married name. Pegues mm. is her maiden name. Oh, okay. Yeah. I couldn't have my father's name because she was on welfare. And in welfare, mm. you couldn't have the father. Yeah. If you found a father, you lose right. the bread. Yeah. That's and it was fair. good to be on welfare because you get medical, dental, coverage. You know what I'm yeah, saying? so dynamics you know until you get older yeah like the reason i wrote my book once a cop was i went to the seminar and it was called everybody got a book in them and i always tell brothers like all of y'all everybody got books in them i'm yeah. telling you it's just you, you gotta do the due diligence right, 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 you right, sit down right. and write about your life remember 40 years later i'm thinking about my mom's and my last name, I knew it was different, but yeah. I never put thought to it. But yeah. now I'm sitting here, I done signed this deal with Simon & Schuster, this big company. Yeah. I got to be on my game. Now, nah, hold on, hold <laughs> on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Oh, yeah, hell oh, yeah. So I got to bring the heat. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a fact. fact. That's a fact. And uh, like all these thoughts start coming back. Because it's a lot of stuff y'all, y'all could remember. Mm-hmm. Unless you did what I, when I became a cop, because people was like, why you wrote your book? How you was doing this? I journaled. My son got my phone. I'll show you a picture in there later. I had journals. You know them date books? Like 2023, mm-hmm. yeah. 21. So when I did my deal, when I signed my agent, he set up a meeting with Simon Schuster, Random House, Double Day, Judith Regan, the top publishers in the world. So he had me in his office, mm-hmm. and he had all my journals there from like 92 to 2013, whatever. Wow. Book. And they was asking, what's in those books? He was <laughs> like, nah, he just been journaling for the last 20 years. They was like, he been writing for 20 wow. years? I knew I had a story because yeah. I knew coming from where I came from, working for this crazy drug conglomerate, being an executive, rising to the top. I knew right. all of these cornballs at the top. I said, yo, I know I got a story to tell. I got to write this down. You know what I'm saying? And again, you know, I didn't write, I always tell, I ain't write every day. I ain't write every week. Sometimes I ain't write months. But you know, when it yeah. hits you, I yeah. was like, and now the best oh, I thing. I know they took that and they was happy with that. Cause they was bugging because so in my book, everything is like qualified and quantified. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Simon Schuster got a whole law division of lawyers. Like they had to vet 
every single thing wow. in there. Like you'll see some names not changed. Like if, if public information, like you see Supreme Prince name is in there because you know the convicted felons. They, yeah. Like some names I had to change. You can yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're reading it like. Definitely changed uh, these- <laughs> my man Bimmy up in there. I was like Malik. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, guess so, <laughs> I had to come up with like 50 yeah. different names. Yeah. So I'm just using names. That I know. Like, yo, I mean, yeah. somebody, what's your name? Oh, let me write that down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Smooth but, uh, and all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I try to like match some of them up yeah, with the yeah. cat, you know, how they, how they so, act and stuff. It, it's funny because I watched the documentary before I read, I'm reading the book. You did it backwards. So, so when I'm listening to the names, I'm like, Oh no, that's this person or that's that person. Oh, where's this person at? Oh, because right. you know a lot of your friends actually came out on the documentary, man, and it was so dope to see. And when I hear, I actually like the book more because it just has so much more detail. Because when they was when he was talking about when he was talking about the guy who hit you up who 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 pistol whipped you, <clears throat> I was like, why would somebody just come up and do that? And then it was, it made sense because and I know I'm jumping ahead, but it was just like, oh, you was on your own. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought you was with the Supreme Team that no, whole time, then. but no. you made several attempts to get out. Like you was mm-hmm. always forward thinking. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I always been forward thinking. Cause like, listen, man, we all grew up Sunday school. Had to go to church two times yeah. a week. Had to go to. So yeah. I knew people always like. Like I was never trying to be preen. I wasn't mm. trying to be John Gotti. Yeah. I was just trying to get sneakers, clothes, and chicks. Y'all yeah. already know the mm-hmm. drill. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't trying to be the killer. You see the opening of the book, that first... I should read that for the audience. Let's read that first. So this is this is classic. It was late in the afternoon. I was hanging out in Baisley Park, chilling on one of the benches next to the handball court. You see, chilling, I had to bring back 80s talk. <laughs> see that? <laughs> you don't say chilling no more. Chilling. <laughs> About to start my shift, Prince and Malik rolled up in Prince Black BMW. Malik got out. He came over to me. He said, yo, come on. Get in the car. We got to go somewhere. I jumped in the back. Malik gave in the front passenger seat, closed the door. Prince pulled off. As we drove, Malik reached back, handed me a shiny 9mm pistol. He said, here, hold this. I took the gun. What's up? He said, we're going to take you someplace. When we get there, we're going to point somebody out to you. And when we do, you're going to shoot him in the head. Woo! Mm. Mm. That's deep. Yeah. Word. And guess where that happened at? 112th and Suft. Wow. wow. Jamaican weed spot, pool hall. So you got right to pull us in. Like how that pressure was of Word, that like moment right there. Right. For real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That pressure had it to was, be crazy. How old was you anyway about this time? 15, 16. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, I was like 16. And it's crazy. I put that there. Like that's like to grab you. Of course. And you don't find you. out about that story until like page 265. Right, <laughs> like, right, right, you gotta right. keep yes. reading and reading and yeah. reading. The name of the chapter that that story is on, once you get to it, it's called Please God, Please God. So you already know yeah. what it was. So I'm sitting there like, ah, right, damn, I'm in the back of the car with this pistol. Like, if I don't kill this guy, guess who dies? You because mm. it was notorious. I mean, y'all know yeah, it's yeah. not like made up stories, people was disappearing, it yeah. was real, right? And so, I'm like, damn, God, I'm in the back, literally saying, God, please don't let this person be yeah, in there. Yeah. But you know, when they get to the y'all see what happened, I'm here, yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, right? It was crazy, but those things were happening. So, like, sometimes it's like a test case, let's do this, let's put them on the run, see if. Because yeah. the next real joint, we know he a soldier. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you just testing him. I look at all like this, um, the MMA and the boxing and all that. Yo, we was doing that in the 80s. Like, we would be in the crib. Had, yo, it was crazy. You just go to the basement. Mm-hmm. They got a Dude's mad. just boxing. Like, oh, right, $5,000. Right, 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 so right, 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 I go right, down right. there with, with them one time to yeah. the basement. It's like, yo. You gotta fight this guy. I'm like, God right, damn. Right, like, right. This and then stop. You see, that's I when you go to the bench, that. yeah. <laughs> I'm fighting my man. We was in third grade together. But they had God, money on it. So you had to be nice with your hands. If you ain't had no hand, man. Yeah, they about to, you gonna get that ass whooping. Yeah. Then they gonna whoop <laughs> you your ass be with nice money. with your man. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Let, let me, um, so your pops, though, you had, um, it, it wasn't, it, it, 
It was like domestic violence in there to a degree, right? It definitely it, was domestic violence. It made me laugh though, because it made me think of well, my mom's was the aggressor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she was the primary physical aggressor. <laughs> she was whipping them out. Yeah, talk Every about that last in incident while. that he was in there, man. That was crazy. Once in a while, she had not. <laughs> <laughs> she was a beast. No joke. Yeah, my my father was like a functional alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Right. Meaning like he was drinking every day but mm-hmm. he went to work every single day and mm-hmm. he was just getting drunk like he would do like i can remember my mom like he pee in the back like my mom's name was eva mm-hmm. his name was richard and he'd wake up no he peeing in the back like, eva what the fuck are you doing <laughs> you <laughs> peeing in the back you peeing in the back oh he <laughs> went in the house he went in the house yeah he was hell. Yeah, he was hell. Oh, was crazy <laughs> I was laughing. but so me and my little son, like, they would be fighting. It wasn't, like, nothing crazy where people had to go to jail, except for that one incident. Yeah, that one. When she hit him in a, she had one time, they was fighting. She took a porcelain bowl and cracked him on his face, broke his nose. He was so drunk. He said, I'm going to the hospital. He went to the driveway, sat in his car for, like, two hours, put a band-aid over, came back in the house. It was like the doctor said, my nose is like, <laughs> My mom's just like, motherfucker, you ain't going to the hospital. So I'm fighting him again. <laughs> <laughs> and yo, it was just I was crazy. crazy when I read that shit. <laughs> it was crazy, but yo, you gonna see if the all that said. all of that craziness, we had a bunch of love. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. It was just yeah, they had their little fights, but it wasn't like police was. They yeah. wasn't calling. Nobody was calling no police. Yeah, yeah. yeah not back then. Like no. then, they definitely wasn't calling no police. And my sisters used to jump. They, my mom's and my sisters, they used to jump them. That's oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> but they was like like really getting them off of, yeah, you know what I'm saying and he wasn't really like fire uh, mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. just he went about drinking his smell off straight oh, right right <laughs> he left how did that affect you cause I know in the book you said you blamed your moms for that yeah cause that's that father son love like yeah. my father really wasn't shit he really wasn't there yeah. but just the love that was my dad you know yeah. what I'm saying I never yeah. forget I came home and he wasn't there and I was crying mm. and I was blaming her. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even though he was, she wasn't really doing nothing. Right, right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. right. Mm-hmm. But um, that's just that, that's just the love, even mm-hmm. human emotions yeah, yeah. You that had you nobody had else for your, to blame. your moms and really? pops. Yeah. You didn't know right. nothing else. Yeah. That's what you knew exactly. as love. That's, that's all you knew. knew. That right. was it. Do you think that made you, uh, at that time, did you think that made you more angry being in the streets and stuff like that? Nah, not really. Yo, for me, let me tell you, my whole life been a pivot, man. I'm able to just like pivot. Like even when I be arguing this stuff, I'm like when it's, it's over, I'm like, boom. And the next five minutes, I'm like, hey, what's going on? We just had an argument. What you talk about? I'm able to pivot and just move because mm-hmm. I can't like fix stuff that already happened. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you're like my father said, like he would come, he would come like on Christmas. Drop yeah. toys off or whatever. Yeah. It's crazy because he never lived more than like two miles from us, but he never really came by. But I would see him once in a while. And it's crazy how like, like what was works. that? He just say what up and what's up, little man, and just keep it moving. Like, he wasn't really coming around, but I would see him once in a while he would come through. Okay. And see us. Plus I would go to my aunt house, which is his sister, and mm-hmm. he would be there. So that's where we really would connect. You know what I'm saying? But as life have it, toward the end of his life, I was a cop. I was a rookie cop. And uh, I started taking care of him. Wow. Had my wife cooking for him every day. He was sick. I was like, yo, you got you to gotta cook for him every day. You got to make a plate for mm. Papa. Like, mm-hmm. it's my duty. Wow. As wow. a child, I got to make sure he good. So we really started getting a little close, a mm. lot closer toward the end of his life. So right. I felt like I did my job. Just you know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. Did he ever um, Did he ever say he was proud of you? Yeah, he, yeah, he was... <laughs> He came out. He came on my graduation. Really? Yeah. He showed me how to tie a tie. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. Which one? High me. school. You, you graduated. No, he a few came. Times, I'm sorry. Yeah, he came to my. <laughs> no, he came to my police graduation. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. academy. Yeah. I can mm. see he felt like, yo, you did it. I'm wow. proud of you. Wow. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. What about your mom's? Because she, she did. She, she passed away earlier. Oh. Yeah. My mom's passed away. At, when I was younger, we're going to leave that for the book so they all could see. But yeah, she okay. passed away mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when I was younger. How did that affect you? 
I had to. Be, I mean, I'm sure you probably still ain't get over it, but yeah, I was in. The, I had to get to these streets heavy. Mm. <laughs> when my mom's passed away, also oh, when she passed away, that's when you went to the streets. After nah, that, I was in the streets since I was 13 years old, oh. selling loose joints, yeah, Lucy's, yeah. mm. not Lucy's. That Aragon got killed for cigarette Lucy's. We were selling Lucy's. My man from Hollis gave me and my man a pack, a hundred pack, and was like, yo, sell these loose, these, these loose joints, a dollar piece, right, right, right. take 20 off the top. Mm -hmm. We figured, yo, we sell 500, we get, we gonna make a hundred dollars a day. It's like early 80s? Early, this is like 83 probably. Yeah, early 83. 80s, So yeah. we getting, selling we junk. selling, we start yeah. selling loose C's, then we start selling masculine tabs. Some of y'all probably don't even know about masculine tabs. I didn't know tabs. what that I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a hallucinogen. Tab. You know, just make you... I La mean, laugh, they said, right? Laugh. You laugh. You know, it was crazy because yeah, yeah. me and my man was like, yo, why everybody be bugging on Let's try this shit. We tried it. We just got a bottle of pink champagne. We had some pink champagne. <laughs> we had some pink champagne. We hit a mess tab. And we just was laughing. Yeah. Like, laughing. It's like, nah, I ain't doing that no more. Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. That's crazy. Nah, I ain't messing with that no more. Uh, yo, you know what's crazy? People be bugging. Like, I saw all these. So then we went, we did loose cocaine, you know, mm. 20 packs of loose cocaine. And then obviously that wonder drug came, crack. And then it was just the crazy takeoff. But all of this, uh, being around all these drugs and stuff, I never did drugs. I was getting ready to ask you that. Yeah. Like, being I never around did. shit, I was going to ask you, did you fuck around? Because remember, you know, growing up on welfare, eating mayonnaise sandwiches, mice in the crib, open refrigerator roaches, I was getting to the bag, man. All my mans who, it was like the five amigos. It was me and like four other dudes. Some of them dudes were smoking, they were smoking weed, drinking. They was hitting Woolies. You know, Woolies is where you have the, the weed. weed, right? You put right, loose right. cocaine or a little crack in there, smoke. They was doing all that. Once in a while, I might take a toke of weed like that, right. hit mm -hmm. that. But I was about the bag, man. Yeah. I ain't, and I saw mm. these dudes was high. Kids, they high. I'm getting their money. They young. Go right. ahead, smoke up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm get, I was going to the bag, man. It never really enticed me. It never really. I ain't even start drinking. Look until I got to the army. Wow. Mm. Yeah, like you know, we do forty ounces here yeah. and there. I take a sip. I wasn't. I never because remember, like my father was an alcoholic. My mother smoked cigarettes all the time. My father smoked cigarettes. I had a couple of sisters that was hitting that weed. And right. Had some family members was in rehab. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, man, I ain't mess with this. I don't know what that drug. I yeah. know that drug gonna get me some bread. Some but of the, I ain't just touching seeing, it. I guess seeing some of the people that you grew up with and you didn't like what it did to them. Steered you off of that Yeah absolutely It never really did anything to me mm -hmm. Cause I didn't want to touch it Till I, I Till I'm gonna tell you First exclusive for this podcast That's what we like We like it We like it We like it My son's know about this story mm -hmm. So I retired It's 10 years ago mm -hmm. It's Christmas day Family gathering You know family Everybody's together My son-in-law and his man is in a garage. I'm at my daughter's house. They in there. They smoking weed. Mm. So I just retired. So I come in the garage like, yo, let me hit that. They like, all right, OG. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it. Take like five or six puffs. Pass it back. I'm good. Go inside. I'm wavy. When like, <laughs> last time you hit a joint? When last time well, you hit a joint before that? 25 years. Ooh. God damn. Because remember, I never did. I never did. Because yeah. remember, I'm in the police. I'm in the army. You can't do that. Like so I'm like, tell my son Starborn right here. He's like 15. I was teaching him to drive a couple of times. He drove. I was like, yo, let's go. My daughter, Corey, is like one years old maybe. Mm. I'm like, we got to go. Now, mind you, I live maybe a mile and a half from my daughter's house. We get in the car. Driving, I'm I'm at a stop sign <laughs> Wait, for like ten minutes. minutes. My son, <laughs> I did that before. Right, right, yeah, wow. my son is like, Dad, you okay? <laughs> I'm like, yo, 
I went for the car. He said, Dad, there's no cars moving. There's no cars moving. There's nobody coming. You can't. So, yo, we finally make it to the crib. Finally, probably about 35 minutes. We make it to from a five minute drive to 35 minutes. Oh, my God. And I came home. I'm like seeing pink elephants in the car. Oh, oh shit. I tell, Star, I tell Star, I was like, yo, call 911. <laughs> now I'm bugging. I'm bugging all the way. Yo, ambulance come. You know, we live in the suburbia. Neighbors is out. They take me out on a gurney. I'm waiting. Yeah. Like, I'm seeing pink elephants. I'm like, Yo, what's going on? Get to the hospital. Yo, my son in law come up. He hit the ambulance. Like, Yo. He think he killed his wife. Oh, Get to the man. hospital. They taking blood. They shooting me. Start the foot of the bed. He all emotional. And I'm just bugging. Doctors hit me. So, like, wife come to the hospital. She come in. Look, I'm like, this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, Christmas night? Really? Oh, man. So I'm just bugging. Doc, like five hours later, you know, they taking tests with the doc. So you know when you're high, it's off. It's off. Yeah. Right. So I'm back. Doctors come in, they about to hit me with a needle. I was like, yo, doc, I gotta talk to you. <laughs> he was like, well, I said, yo, I smoke some weed. He was like, we kind of knew. Right, but, right. but you wasn't saying anything, yeah, so we yeah. had to like yeah, go yeah. through the motions. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I haven't touched it since. I had to go through the motions. I wasn't even. Pink elephants? This, no, well, this, you. this new way. Yeah, I'll put that down. I want that. <laughs> That's great. I don't even want to sell that. Y'all can have all of that. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. This potency next level out here, Yeah, man. my son-in-law was like, you know, it's usually what? Puff, puff, patch? Yeah. They said they were standing like, yo, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> they said you took like six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> they was like, we told you. It was like, yo, he the man. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exclusive. Yeah. I never oh, told that story. <laughs> that's crazy. Yo, that's crazy. All right, man. Let's go. I back. know G gonna G gonna cue that up for the. For oh, the, absolutely, he man. Cue oh, that absolutely, up for, man. For the teaser. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> After 25 years, he's seen peak. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I can't believe it. No. Yeah, the Ellis part is this. My son's like. Are you gonna move, Dad? Are you okay? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> just bung and looking. Like, cards are coming. He's like, nobody's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! He's waiting for it to turn green. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the stop sign to turn green. Stop sign turn green. Now you know if I was at a light, I'll still be there right now. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me, man. How'd you get down with a uh, Supreme team? Yo, it's crazy. People always ask me that. Good question. Mm -hmm. But people don't know, like, Bimmy ain't from the South Side. Bimmy from Farmers Boulevard. Wow. So we yeah, come yeah. up, we come up together on that side of town. Mm. And, you know, he knew I was in the streets. And his lieutenant, without saying his name, because he he on some high holy, he don't want nobody to know that he was in the Supreme Team. But meanwhile, he talking about it on Drink Champs, but that's a whole nother story. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what up? Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay. So they was like, yo, come through. You know, I was on Murdoch 198 with my mans and we was doing our own thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all had our own money, had a couple of dudes pitching for me here and there. Mm -hmm. And then it just it was it just got a little crazy over there. I was like, yo, let me go over here. Because they was getting, I already knew they was really getting it. Yeah. Yeah, and so I went over there, and day one plopped me right around the block on one eighteen and something. Shit, I remember one of my first sales, first maybe one or two sales. You know, I'm used to, I'm hustling, mm -hmm. yeah. so the fiends is coming. I don't know this red cap, green cap, you know, right, right, red fiend right, coming. Right. So I'm going hit the fiend off, and God bless his dad, Iron Horse, ran up on me. He was like a lieutenant under I forget green, one of one of them dudes. And Big Brown, like, boss, he was like, yo, what you doing, shorty? And I'm like, yo, man, I'm trying to get this money. What the fuck you talking about? Like, yo, you got, you got to ask them what they want. I got what they want. What we talking about here? <laughs> and my man had to grab him, like, yo, he just started. He don't yeah. know. It's like, I'm damn getting killed on the first day on the mm. block. <laughs> so to explain. Tiff was trying to get money. 
<laughs> That's crazy. I think the Supreme Team, they had like a methodology on how they, uh, like an organized way of how they sold crack where certain lieutenants had certain color caps and stuff like that. Yeah. And you had a certain cap. So when they was on the block, the the the, the, the fiends or the, mm -hmm. the drug users, mm -hmm. I don't want to say crackheads no more. Right. But the drug users used to um, call out the color and then that particular person who had that color would come up. Right. And you superseded that and just was like, I got whatever you need and just... Right. <laughs> Cause I didn't, but, and then wait for the color. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. You know, I'm just used to being on Murdoch and one night Nate. Yeah. Fiend, come get the... Yo, mm -hmm. serving them. Let's go. Let's mm -hmm. go. I'm like trying to impress. I'm just here the first day. I yeah. know it's a couple of other workers there. I'm like, yo, I'm going to get this money. Yeah. I it, learned pretty quick. <laughs> like, this... I'm telling you, this was a fortune... 500 run company yeah. That's what's crazy I look at these dudes It's like yo They could have flipped And washed all that money Buildings Laundry mats All of that Like you know But that's what it is In the street Everybody when You make a million You want a million and one Yeah you know, That I didn't satisfied. know Like the, the level of Structure the uh, Supreme team had Is Was incredible Like I mean like you said, it was three. It was a twenty-four hour run thing, and they was it three was like shifts. A, three shifts. Midnight to eight in the morning, eight to four, and four to twelve. I worked at midnight shift once in a while. I worked a, a four, but you know who else worked those hours? Who? The police. This is how smart they was. Figure, we do the same shift as the police. It's easier to get a put a get a cop to be on a take. Cops making like twenty six thousand dollars a year. We make it quarter million a week, mm. so it was easy. This is how smart. yo yo yo. This yo. is how smart they was. Like yo. I gotta give them they do. Yeah. It is what it is, and I'm not right. condoning none of the crazy right, right, stuff right, right, we right. did when we was out there. But I'm just dropping That's science. Ingenious. Like think about it. They our hours was the same hours as the police. So there was the same cops coming through right, the same, every day. Same you right. read it. I, I don't know if you got up to the part where I got caught with 300 vials. Yeah, I just yeah, I had to re-up. Yeah. I just read up 300 vials. 300 vials. I'm still in jail. Rockefeller laws. I'm still in prison right now. Word. Police blue and whites came up. The bag was like, damn. I'm so I'm sitting here. Should I run? You know that's. I was about to ask you that. Like, why you didn't run? <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here saying, they kind of had me dead to right, and I'm like, if I run, they're gonna be calling back up. Like all yeah, of this is yeah, getting ready yeah. to go down. But I know we got bread to get me out of jail. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, dude took the bag, threw the bag back, and was like, "Tell your boss I did him a favor." I'm saying, so you know, we we cool. So I'm like, all right, whatever. As soon as they peel off, I run, run too quick. <laughs> I run. I run. Now he ready to run. Now he ready to run. Right, right, right. I get that. I told Bam, I said, yo, police just caught me with the re-up. They do it back. It was like, yo, tell your boss. It was just like, yo, man, get back out there. You don't know. Yo, get back out there. I said, damn. Remember, I'm there for sneakers too. Like, I yeah. ain't know all of this yeah, stuff that yeah, was going yeah. on. Cause there was never no police around. There was never no police around. That's crazy. Like that. That's an incredible time. Three hundred like, thousand. That's, that's what make yeah. me. I don't mean to cut you off, bro. That's what make me think like you doing all that hustling, right? Like, yeah. where the fuck you think about being a cop? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's crazy. That's super crazy. I never really money. was thinking about being a cop, but what happened at Andrew Jackson High School, one of the most violent mm -hmm. high schools in the city, there was a cop assigned to the to the school. Mm -hmm. And he would talk to me all the time. He knew I'm coming with big dookie rope chains. You see this? It's funny. So the audience knows. You see the back of this book? That's in the hallway on the first floor of Andrew Jackson oh, High that's School. Oh, that's wow. I got the Nugget, 27 yeah. diamond nugget medallion yeah. on. Nugget diamond ring. More importantly, I know I got a bunch of money and I got a nickel plated 25 in it's, that picture. In this picture. Wow. Right. Right. You wasn't walking around heavy on the neck. Yeah, you couldn't. Back Hell then, no. you couldn't yeah, could yeah. walk around. Wow. But there was no metal detectors. Remember? Yeah, I remember. There's no yeah. metal detectors back then. So I'm going, I'm going, I'm hitting packages off in school. We, this mm -hmm. is what we did. This is yeah. what we did all day. So Eastside High shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, wow. it is what it is. <laughs> and he would talk to me. He knew 
Like, yo, man, you're a good kid, man. This will be a good job one day. So fast forward to me being ordered to kill somebody and all this crazy stuff. It was like, what am I going to do? So, you know, what the neighborhood was like, take a city test. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Hopefully right. you pass, get a job. So I figured I'd do the great escape. I went to the army recruiter and was like, yo, how fast can you get me out of here? Mm. Oh, he wow. Said, you got to give me like three or four months. So I said, all right, this is like July. So I sold drugs every single day up until October 18th, 1987. You knew you was going though, yeah. I knew, but you can't be out here in these yeah. streets and saying, yo, I'm going to the army. Yeah. So yeah, I ain't say yeah. nothing to nobody. Only thing I said something to was my girl because I was like, I had a little baby. I had a son in December and then I had my daughter in um, June, but my daughter girl was really my girl. The other one, you yeah, know, you had I was two messing basically around. at the same time. The same time, like six months apart. Yeah, then I had to like, but my girl was my daughter, mm -hmm. mom. And so I was like, I want to take my daughter and mom's. And the recruiter was like, you, you, if you marry, you get $250 a month. I came home. I said, baby, we're going to get married. Because <laughs> I was a hustler. Right, 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 right. We're going to get this 250 <laughs> So her mama, we get married. We're going to justice and peace. we go going to joke tomorrow. Let's go. I need you as a witness. And we went. That picture's in there. But we wow. got married. Justice mm. and peace. To get that two fifty, she didn't. So that whole time you was hustling, she was with you. How did she feel about you hustling? Was she scared? Did she want you out, or did she enjoy it? She was taking money out the shoebox all the time. Right, you she know, was had down. Full she was down. Yeah. 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 She, she was you a down. good dumb, yeah. She was a good girl. Yeah. Uh, you know, I shoe boxes full of money. We just throw the bands in the box. You know, she just going to girlfriends. They shopping and everything. Mm. It was, was they so was enjoying good. it. <laughs> they was enjoying <laughs> life. Your mother was too, because I mean, I don't know if she was okay with it, but no, nah, she definitely wasn't okay with it. But she took it. She ain't really take it, but okay. you know, come home like, yo, here, mm -hmm. we'll get some. We need something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have black and white TVs. Like, nah, we put color. And everybody got color. Let's put a color TV up on. Mm. She would cry. I remember, I first came home with that necklace. My sister Angie was like, ooh, look at mom, look at Boobie. Yeah. You know, my family called me Boobie. She was like, look at Boobie. <laughs> and my, I'm in the mirror like, you know, yeah. Sammy the jeweler. I'm, I'm looking like, yo, I'm from Flossin. My mother was crying. She was like, my son is going to die. I was like, mom, I'm good. Wow. She said, you're going to be dead or in jail. I said, I'm good. I'm going to be good. Yo, it's like, Angie, I'm going to whip your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, at 16, what was, you, what was that? When did she find out? What age did you, do you remember? Well, I was in it since 13. So she knew so from So it was then? crazy since I never asked her. I haven't asked anybody oh. from 13 to now 55 for a dime. Other than mm. like, I may be like, Yo, give me a little yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like paying my right, rent, right, 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 car right. payment. No, nah, I've been taking care of myself since I was literally 13. Mm. I haven't asked nobody for anything. Mm. So for real, for real. What made you, what was the What was the culminating? My mother couldn't give me nothing though. Remember, she yeah. was on welfare. Yeah. We had that funny money. Food most stamps. most dudes that hustle would be that same situation yeah. or that parents be yeah. like that. Right. Except for my main man, Sean Du. Yeah. He grew up with, House, two cars, white picket fence, had everything, ballets, whatever, mm -hmm. levels and everything. But he's the epitome of, like, the good dude just going by. He ain't had to be in the streets, mm -hmm. but we was boys. So yeah. it, was, it was a no-brainer. Like, yeah. I got to do this. This is yeah. what, what everybody else yeah, is yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what was the incident that made you go... I got to get out of here? <laughs> you read it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the that, incident. Oh, the one where you was pistol whipped? <laughs> Nah, when I had to go kill oh, this okay, dude. Okay, 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 okay. So I mean, but it so was, how did was that go down? Break that. How that go down? And I, and what and it, what's going on in your mind when you when you get the gun? You just like how the fuck I'm gonna get out of this shit? It wasn't really about how I'm gonna get out of it. It was more all I was praying for is this dude not to be there. Mm -hmm, if he right. was there, I'm getting him. It mm -hmm. was like when you in it, like you can't. You play cops and robbers when you was little, and I always tell people, you ever played a cop and a robber at the same time? No. That's why you see cops get locked up, because they want to be cops, then they want to be shoplifted from Home Depot. Like, what you going to do? You can't, you <laughs> right. can't do everything. Yeah, right, right. Right. So I was locked in as a rob. I'm locked. Yeah. So it was like, this part of the game. Mm. I had to pop this dude. Right. Hopefully he don't die. Mm -hmm. So it was all part of the game. Yeah. Mm. 
and and from there you was just like fuck it <laughs> get me out of here get me in the army whatever yeah. which way it is from and that moment it was like because remember like it was fun like i write in the beginning like when we start selling like weed and cocaine and stuff we didn't even had no guns like it was just fun yeah. mm-hmm. it was just dude we were just getting money nobody mm-hmm. had guns until my man Ren, we was on the block one day, and the fiend came and knocked on the window. Ren always run to the money. He ran to the money. Next thing we hear, pop, 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 pop. It's like, we got to get some guns now. They shot They shot at him. They ain't hit mm. him. It was like, yo, we need some guns yeah. out here. Yeah, it got and real I, bought, after I bought my first gun from this fiend. He was like, yo, let me get three. So that's like $30, three jumbos. So he was like, I ain't got no money. I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here. He was like, but I got this. Show me that nickel plate at 25. I was like, it worked? He was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> took him around the corner, gave him like five jumbos, took that, and it was like, I'm ready now. How naive we are. You didn't even know if that shit had bodies on it or nothing I like know. that. No, I real about that. Yeah. No, I that shit. It just was a gun. That was what he was. That's, That's all it was. You ain't even know. Like, you could have been caught with that shit. Yeah, you, you don't mean, care about that. We didn't care. I mean, <laughs> like, we all had dirty guns. So a couple of my boys, they already, they got they joints before me. I was like one of the last ones to get Oh, one. man. Like, I read this book. I'm like, you one of the luckiest men alive, man. Right. That's yeah. a fact. That's why <laughs> oh, your story man. is crazy, bro. Like, you you one of the luckiest. Story, like, you were destined to do this shit. Like, Yo, I'm telling you, I always been like, I just been lucky, man. It's, right. Like, I remember this fiend across the street was like, yo. Like, he want to come, yeah, give me one, give me one, give me one. But he look a little muscular. So I was like, fuck that. I ain't got no work. My man Ren <laughs> makes the sell. 20 minutes later, pew, like seven cars oh, pull up. Wow. We, we run in the store, throwing potato chip bags, you know, getting mm-hmm. the work out. I'm like this, damn. Unbeknownst to me, Ren made the sell. So they came, grabbed Ren, mm. took him out. I took rim work, my work. I'm back. Now I'm more oh. heavy. Now I got rim work. I got more work. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't gonna need this. You know what I'm <laughs> that close. Wow. But I could have made this up. You know what's crazy about that story? That dude, he was a cop. Became one of my good friends in policing to this day. Wow. To this oh, you don't day. even know? He don't even know. Oh, that's it. Because the police ain't smarter than me. That's it. Wow. He went, he ain't know. I'll never forget a face. You in the streets? Yeah. Word. I ain't never going to forget what you look like. That's it, I remember bro. I first we came in the police department. You know, I played ball. So I played on a police basketball team. And I was playing with him. And I was like, oh, shit. I'm done. This dude ain't know nothing. He ain't know nothing. Wow. He ain't have a clue. Remember this one white sergeant? He was like, you look familiar. You from Queens? I was like, yeah. He said, South Side? He said, yeah. He said, yo, I took down Bimmy. I took down Prince. They all know me. You know them dudes? I said, I don't know them dudes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about them dudes. <laughs> Everybody know them dudes. <laughs> Those was like the two moments where like somebody, but that undercover, I would have never... He became wow. my man. Hold I'm on, like, wow. let me ask you something though, Corey. All yeah, that time cool. you been hustling, on, you ever got locked up? Yeah, I got locked up. Oh, you up. did get locked up. Uh-huh. Not for hustling. Oh. Uh-huh. I got locked up because of the color TV incident. I don't yeah, know if you yeah, got I've seen that. I read that. So read this that. fiend came with a tough color TV. So I was like, what you want for this? It was like four or five jumbos. I was like, all right, here, take it. Cool. Ma, we got TV. You got right. a nice color TV. Right. Put it in the crib. <laughs> like later that night, the fiend, some lady knocking on our door. Now, I live on Farmers and Murdoch oh, above the store. No. So I'm like, what's up? Come downstairs. Old lady, my son sold you a TV? You know that street shit I'm like? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what you talking about? It hurt me to my heart to say that to that old yeah. lady. Yeah. I just wanted to kill this dude. Yeah. Like, damn, you took your mother TV? TV word. And I gave it to my mother. So one of these mothers going to be crying. That's it ain't going to be my mother. <laughs> That's not what makes sense. I was like, damn, you know what you did? You got TV back? Nah, nah. Nah, nah. I can't have my mama story. I can't have my mama story. Somebody go, somebody mama gonna be crying. Yeah. Shit, ain't gonna be Miss McGee. <laughs> so when you just said it wasn't here, you don't got the, you don't know I what was like, nah. And then, so I'm like, I'm get this dude. And my man, my man had just came home. As fate would have it, this dude comes around the corner. 
me and my man duff him out bad, like real bad. We duff him out. This dude, the next day, called the police. Lock my man up. Dude's coming to my crib. He must have told me, yo, go get life, tell life, whatever. So they come and yo, boy got locked up. What y'all do? I was like, damn, he got popped for that shit? All right. So my smart ass want to go to the precinct. Yeah, I don't know. I go to the precinct that. to check up on him. <laughs> <laughs> the feed is like, that's all. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> that's I go to 113 precinct. They lock me up. So I'm like, damn, remember, I never got locked up, so I ain't had no bodies or nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, so they all are me. Mm-hmm. My man, my man been in and out. He just came home. Mm-hmm. They remanded him. Mm-hmm. So I got popped because mm-hmm. I went to the damn precinct. So it was crazy. I don't know if I've been put this up. My mother's dealing with a correction officer. Yeah, that was in there. So I'm in, I'm in the um, Queen Central book. I'm in the bookings. He comes, I'm, I got my jewelry and all that. This dude comes, so my man, I'm almost saying his name. I'm trying not to say his name. <laughs> right, right. We're in a bullpen, so people sitting on a bitch. So I used to give him a little money, like protect me here and there. So he's like, you want to sit down? I'm like, yeah, fuck, I get a seat. He duffs out like four dudes. Like, oh, my. Duff him out. I'm like, damn, if they move this dude out of here, now I'm what am I doing? <laughs> Why even tell this crazy dude I want to sit down? You ain't even think about no shit like that. Word. Yeah, he I ain't know what he's gonna do. Let me go. Let me go. Oh seat. man. Anyway, then so I got this crazy dude duffing people out. Then my mother boyfriend comes down, right above. Give me your jewelry. Give me your money. Give me this. I'm like, yo, chill. <laughs> Y'all really killing me down here. <laughs> I can't wait to get to court. You got y'all looking like the man out here. Uh, <laughs> I get to court. They all on me. Mm-hmm. So I was good on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I had to go back and forth. Mm-hmm. By that time, I had that army situation. So I'm telling my lawyer. The judges, whatever. I said, yo, tell him I'm going in the army. So he told the judge, yo, he going to the army October 17th. And the judge was like, you really going to the military? I said, I'm going. I mm-hmm. got my date. She was like, I'm going to dismiss this case, but if I see you back in here again. I said, you ain't never going to see me. You ain't got <laughs> to worry about that. You kept mm-hmm. your word. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I only was in the bullpen. I want to go to jail. I don't know what y'all dudes will be in there for. <laughs> so that Rikers bus came. I was like, yo, I got to go on that bus. They was like, nah, because you got to go to court first. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So it worked out. Did it. Yeah, lucky, uh, lucky escape number thirty-five. Right, right, right. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. So you 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 go to the army, you get out, you become a police officer. Yeah. Yo, it's like a full one eighty. Like what the, like what's going through your mind your first day on the force? So the, yo, the slick thing is, I knew it was going to take a couple of years to be a cop with investigations, mm-hmm. right? So I said. And I always tell these kids, like, I would never tell a kid to stop selling drugs and stuff and being in gangs if I don't have, if I don't have an option for it. Because I know mm-hmm. I was that wolf. Yeah. Like, what you got? Uh, you just telling me like, let's go. Yeah. It's like scared straight. I hate it. Like, they'll take ten kids, take them to sing, sing. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fuck you in the ass. We gonna do this. We gonna do that. And they bring them right back to the block. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like I'm saying, like, how we we don't let's have like. McDonald's, Target, Walmart. Like, y'all ain't gonna make this crazy money yeah. with this guaranteed job for y'all right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're gonna end up being a manager, whatever. But yeah. this is what they do. So, I lost my train of thought. Where we was at? Oh, what you was just I talking about? about to get on the force. Yeah, so I knew. So if I pivot and do those three years, so now I came home and start my investigation, I look like a quiet boy. Oh, he just came out the army. Yeah, yeah. The That's a fact. That's a fact. They're checking off the boxes. Mm. My neighbors is telling me, yo, police knocking on our door, asking questions about you. Because they was doing their investigation. But my neighbors is locked in with me. Yeah, yeah. They was like, you good. We ain't telling them nothing. We told them, get the fuck out of here. I was like, good. Don't tell them nothing. <laughs> right, right. Don't tell them so you nothing. went to the service at this time already, or you ain't going yet? I did. I came out. Oh, you out the service at now this time. Now I'm out. Right, right, right. So I look like a choir boy. Right, right, got you. I come in, 
And I'm telling the investigator, yo, I want to jump out of air. You know, I used to repel out of air. Yo, <laughs> got that in NYPD, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him asking me nothing about that. Queens, <laughs> 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 I don't know nothing about Queens. <laughs> so it, so I look good for those three yeah, and a half, yeah. three years and eight months. Like, oh, he good because we got a bunch of other candidates. These dudes just getting out of high school. They in the South Side, you know what I'm saying? Let's look at them dudes. Mm-hmm. This he made it out. He a good dude. Not knowing I had all this crazy stuff in the past. <laughs> but they don't, you know, but you did a lot of yours as an adolescent. So you wasn't even yeah. adult. So like how, you know, like you know, so in order to be a cop, you just can't be convicted for a, fe- of yeah, a felon. Yeah. Felony. So I never was convicted. So you really wasn't hiding nothing, really. I yeah. really wasn't hiding, but yeah. it ain't cool saying like I shot somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I did yeah. this. Yeah. I did that. Because you know, them WBs is trying to weed us out anyway. Mm. They trying to weed us out. They mm-hmm. don't even want us to get them jobs. Yeah, that's a You fact. know what I'm saying? So yeah. we got to stay focused. That's a fact. Get in. Right, right. That's why I be trying to tell these young brothers and sisters like, yo, if we don't get these jobs, guess who's gonna get them? I mean, now the numbers is crazy. They making like a buck fifty a year. Yeah, like, you know, all the young Without the boys OG. is like, no, I don't be no cop. I'm like, all right, fuck it. <laughs> don't be a cop. I'm gonna get that bread. Mm, right. <laughs> you mm. give me 150 and you're gonna give me a gun to carry for free? Yeah. <laughs> like, y'all wanna run around with guns. <laughs> well, Cole, you know, actually, Cole, let me tell you, this was crazy about me that people know. Um, people close to me know 20 years I was a cop. I never even carried a gun off duty once wow. in a while. Wow. Very rare. Mm. It you was so really crazy. To, yeah. yeah, because I remember I did all of that. Mm-hmm. I already did. I already did all of that. You ever know be so crazy? Once in a while I put a gun on, I'm going out with my wife. She'd be like, why are you carrying a gun? I'd be like, my fucking cop. What's you <laughs> 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 like, like, Why are you wearing that? Like, we going somewhere and that's going to be yeah. crazy? And that's like... That's why I never really carry. Because when you carry, when you have a gun, you your paws get a little bit bigger. Like somebody step on your foot, you be right, like, yo, that's right, that's yo, right. why you yeah, step on my yeah, foot? Right, somebody yeah. step on my foot now, be excuse me. I'm sorry, I put my foot under you. Yeah, like yeah, I don't right. want no problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm, I'm not even yeah. so yeah. good. Scuff yeah. mark. Yeah. We, 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 we are. Yeah. But what I, what I, what yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask you was when you were caught, right? Do you did you still like think about the Supreme Team? I was like, just about to ask you that. Like looking for you or anything? Nah, cause remember, like, hey, these was all my man's. Like, were well, you still affiliated though? I never was. So when you a cop, you can't hang with convicted folks. R- right. Yeah. You can't. So like, if I would just see, let's say I see Bimmy in the corner. Yeah. I could talk to him. Yeah. But like we can't be exchanged. Now I can't go to his house. He can't go to my. You can't have that intimate relationship. Mm. Okay. But I can see everybody say, hey, if I'm in the, I just go. If I go to freaking to the tunnel, when you're in the tunnel, you just in the tunnel. Like yeah, I yeah. ain't meeting you there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but you yeah, can't right. have the intimate relationship. Mm. Okay. You I understand you. what I'm saying? So it was like they shouldn't have had no problem with me because I escaped. Y'all ain't escaped. Don't be mad at me. Yeah. But right. I never really got, as a matter of fact, without naming any names of them, the big dudes. I was a cop. I remember seeing them dudes like, yo, I need a box of nine millimeters. That's what they was on. I'm looking at the motherfucker like, all right, which, nines? You want two boxes? Right, right. All right. Never speak to him again. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's you it. You trying to take money out of yeah, my baby yeah, mama? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. serious? Yeah. That's how I knew, that's I knew you was going to be affiliated yeah. with that. Right. Yeah. I knew yeah. I was just going to hook up or something. The word. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they, they think you playing yeah, both yeah. sides in that yeah. kind of way. I, what I told you, cops or robbers, like that's right. You ain't playing one I'm side. Not, right. Nah, right. you can't play both sides. So you didn't feel like you you didn't feel no when you was a cop. You didn't feel like um, you didn't feel like you was playing. You, you wasn't feeling guilty of arresting somebody. Like yo, this is these are these, these this would have been my boy if I was still <laughs> in the streets and stuff like that. Like there was no guilt of, yeah, when did it you came see to it that? that way. Nah, I couldn't. Not like really. listen. Like he was, once he was I a did, cop at this time. Yeah, once you right. did, I did the pivot. You know, I got stories. I remember being in Queensbridge, grabbed this dude up. He, I know he had like 12 vials of crack in his pocket. But I'm looking for the guns, man. Like, that sneaker, my, that was me. Mm. I was, what, five years removed from that. Yeah. Mm. You know, so I grabbed him. I know he got crack in his pocket. I'm like, yo, where the gun at? He's like, yo, we ain't got no guns. I said, yo, I'm telling you, man. Yo, search the bushes. I'm telling you, yo, search the bushes. No gun. They don't know that, that he I got know the crack. That he got the work on him. Mm. Mm. 
So now I tap him on his ass. I was like, yo, get out of here. I won't see you no more. And I'm saying, yo, that could have been my 300 vial. Yeah. Mm, right. Like I just right. gave yeah, him yeah, that play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a, like that little sneak of money, that ain't he ain't he yeah. had no bricks. Yeah. Cool, I, I didn't ain't gonna, know what he was doing. You yeah. probably the only nigga I know that could say you did both sides, Word. bro. Word. That's like that. ill. Like, you got a hell no, of a story. There's bro. a lot of people who did both sides, but probably not as yeah, intimate. not as bold yeah. not as just, intimate as I did yeah. it. But you was all in not, on both sides. Yeah, though. that's what I mean. Like, like, you was all in. Like, like, you was in on that side. You put <laughs> you put it down, B. And then saying, when you was on this side, you, you went all the way to the top. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, but that's the only way to go. And I'm trying to go to Hollywood, sending y'all producers out there. <laughs> <laughs> I look at this little fake power and cannon and all. Oh, Ain't right. no way that lady living on the south side all this time with no bodyguard driving this truck. Hey, what are we talking about? <laughs> that lady can't die. Nobody killing that lady. <laughs> that's what I'm take this story, Did you take this story? Y'all need to take this story, man. Right? <laughs> so she would have been dead in a week. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? I didn't rock, know rock, 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 rock. She just running around Southside, just killing people yeah. and everything with no back. <laughs> she killing, shooting at the mob and everything. Word. That's why I can't, yo, I can't watch none of this. <laughs> really? Oh, I you... can't really watch yeah. it. It's and it was supposed to take place in your time, too. Right. Word. And this is what Word. I'm saying. She would have never lived all of this time. It's impossible. Yeah, that's why they, you know, that's why they need people like you I mean, to consult even, even some shit Prime like that. Right, had, right, you know, the we had security vans. You know what I'm saying? The Supreme Team had security vans. Yeah, I remember the time when you was talking about the guy who had stuck the Uzi in front with, uh, with one of your boys, and then you went and told Supreme, I mean, Prince, excuse me, not Supreme. And next thing you know, there was all kind of uh, security in the bushes and shit the whole night. Like, <sighs> Yeah, that was... Talk about that story, actually. Yeah, that was a crazy night. So, dude had pulled the Uzi out on me and my man, dude. Mm. God bless, he ain't, he ain't here no more. So he put an Uzi on, on Murdoch. So now I get over here, I'm with the print team. Bim sees an opportunity. He knows some money over there. She's so like, yo, I want you to go over Murdoch with this work. Mm -hmm. Now you already know them dudes is tight that I'm coming over here with this work. I was like, yo, I got to bring my man Do on. And that's his man. He's like, yeah, you and Do. Yo, go ahead, get that mm -hmm. work. They can still do their work, but y'all got this work. So dudes is mad because they know I got the south side work over here on the north side. Mm. And um, one day, dude pull up like, who's boo and do? You know, they call me boo and mm. do. So dude's like, yo, dude out there looking for you. So we come out, dude go to the window, dude pull out a Uzi, put it in his chest. was like, yo, y'all got to get off the block with that work from the south side. So they kind of had to drop on us. It's three dudes in the car. And we had heat on us, but they, yeah, they already got it. They have. So they pull off. That's how I come to the south side. Like, yo, bro, this dude just pull us Uzi on. Yeah. So punch is like, go back over there. Like, didn't I just tell y'all? <laughs> <laughs> yo, did y'all hear this? What happened? I don't want to fucking check on me right now, me. <laughs> we go back over. Next thing I know, they had the block locked. We had to block. It was, the dudes never showed back up, but mm -hmm. it just shows like it wasn't playing, man. Yeah. I feel like that situation because what happened later on, uh, what you said, what happened with him was like you you didn't even see the play because y'all want to you want to go to Prince House, you meet up with him, and he's like he get he threw money in your pocket, and you like mm -hmm. yo y'all gonna pay this motherfucker off? Oh right, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, weeks later. The dude come in the park. So I'm like, that's that dude. Run, tell him. He gives me stacks, stacks. I'm put this in your pocket. I'm like, I'm like, that's it. Yeah, let's go. Put that in your pocket. Go. Whatever they did, I don't know what the money was, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm tight. Yeah. I'm super tight. But you know, that's how, you know, the network politic. I don't know what their situation yeah. was. Yeah. Why the money exchange hands or whatever. But um, then that, that dude ended up he died like a few weeks later, maybe a month or so. Yeah. You know, yeah. I it mean, I don't know why, who, whatever, you know. Cause he was a he was a he was a he was a heavy gangster. Mm. He was a stick up kid. So he could uh he had enemies from various Yeah, yeah. He places was he himself. was doing all kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm. I'm just glad he didn't pull that. Yeah, Ooh, he, I bought over here. It's pretty block. Right. Yeah. He was a dangerous dude. All right, we're going to go fast forward back to being a cop. You didn't feel no racism in there? What? Man, right. I'm, I'm leaving this in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Word, word, word. I never heard you talk about it, though, what? really. Let me tell you, police I never heard a, you. Nobody's asked you about that shit. Yeah, they just said, I never heard you talk white, about the racism. predominantly male, white, dominated, racist right. society. Now, they, they're all not, but what I'm saying, when you start an organization off of capturing slaves, yeah. slave patrols, and then you passing this stuff down, you know, the mentality is like the black man ain't anything. Let's yeah. get him. Let's get him. Yeah. You know, but I always stood on, what they say, 10, ten toes? Mm -hmm. right. I always, mm -hmm. from the beginning, they ain't played with me. They thought I was crazy. It was like, yo, I never do that black white joke. I don't do that why the chicken cross the road. Don't play none of that shit with me. Because when I leave here, y'all going to be talking about me. So I'm not even going to play. I ain't going to be talking about Greg. I ain't talking about you. Like, I was like that. Mm. So they used to be like, yo, this dude is different. Mm -hmm. I remember, so every precinct has what they call a club meeting once a month. These cops get together, go to a bar drinking. So I went one time. I went to one meeting. Mm. And I was like, I get the fuck out of here. Cause I'm gonna end up shooting one of these motherfuckers. <laughs> Y'all over there talking like black jokes and all of that. Oh, I got oh, yeah, but wow. then you got Any the other brothers. blacks over there. How many yeah, other? Yeah, you got. So I was in the 114 precinct. It was over 400 cops. It was only 35 blacks. Wow. Damn. But you know some of these Negroes, these was like Negroes. Like, right, no, I'm right. not playing. I don't yeah. play that. Though. I'm not because like 1976, when my mother made me and my little sister watch that five part series called Roots. I was affected from that day. Yeah. Right? Like, nah, y'all ain't gonna treat me, you know, yeah. no less. You understand what I'm saying? So I had my foot on their neck mm. all the time. I ain't play with them at all. They, they like knew. Them. Nah, they ain't really. I, you know, so but you when you take that stance, well, you gotta understand yeah. eating lunch by yourself. Nobody wants to work with you, right? That I didn't be care, cold, man. That no, gotta... it was good for me. Cause I won't be with I don't yeah. won't be with none of them anyway. I ain't like y'all anyway. I don't mm. be around it. Yeah, you know, everybody fake love. I don't do the fake love. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. But th that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why it's like it almost feels like you live in a double life in that thing because it's like you really you just here for the job you're not really here for the socialization or none of that stuff and you, nah, didn't, you didn't feel indoctrinated and right, stuff right, like right, that right, right. you know what I'm saying nah I want to go on their little chicken run trips and all that they, like, <laughs> <laughs> they do little bus trips <laughs> yeah, they used to do little bus trips to Atlantic City and all of that they like yo Pegues is not a team player he don't want to go you don't want to play a softball game nah I won't play nah, I'll be there. hit somebody in the head with a bat I don't want to be around none of this crazy <laughs> I won't play with them so nah. that so how yo, you when you put cops Guns and drinking together, y'all don't even understand. You yeah. know, it's this what you call a blue wall. Yeah, you know, it's a subculture within right, the culture. Right, right, yeah. right, right. It's crazy. Right, y'all don't understand how crazy it is. No, I can't. I don't want to even be around them because I'm gonna hurt somebody. Mm. Like, don't play with me. Plus, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. My baby's gonna eat, so I ain't putting my life, my job on the line. Mess with y'all crazies. Yeah, I remember one time, me and my partner pulled somebody over. I think what is it, like 30000 in the back. Whatever it was, he had a black duffel bag in the back. I'm on the driver's side. I'm like, yo, what's in that bag? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Ain't nothing in that bag. That's your bag. I said, yo, bro, what's in the bag? <laughs> That's your bag. That ain't my bag. I put your bag. <laughs> Show my partner. My partner looked over the car like the hood, look at me like jackpot. I was like, yo, get out the car. Cuff him. Bring him to the precinct. Vouching that money. My partner's like, yo, I'm doing the math saying, yo, 30,000, we busted down 15 a piece. We making 35,000. We got a million dollar job in 20 years. And this shit might be a setup. Man, get the fuck out of here, mm. man. The, I, but that car probably had cameras on because they used to do stings like that. And I know they wasn't feeling me. I'm coming oh, here. Right, so they might have set you up like that. Right, yeah, yeah. Corn rolls and all that. Yeah. They didn't want me there, tattoos on my neck. Yeah. I said, man, you, I knew I pivoted then. Right. Yeah. But that bread, because yeah. that bread was looking good. I was, like, yeah. I was broke. And yeah. I was like, yo, nah. Good was thing you were thinking, though. Know, good thing you were thinking, bro. Yo, I wait, because like cops can't even take free food. Mm. Like, you can't. What about what, donuts? I see them get I, donuts all the time. I know. 
So this is the thing. I forget what the dollar amount is. You can't take more than like ten dollars, five dollars, whatever oh, five, it is. Five, five, right? ten dollars, mm-hmm. something like that. So I was so scared that they would set me up. Like I would go to the store. You know, store is kind of like cops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. So yeah. you come get a hero, yeah. like five dollars. They throw it back to you. I used to be like, man, I said, I'm gonna give you a five. Give me back five ones. You got, we gotta have a monetary yeah, exchange. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, if you gave me back five, I ain't counting. I don't know what he gave me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a fact. Yeah. I'm not taking nothing without a monetary exchange. Mm. Give me four quarters. Give me something yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was too scared. And that's how, I, you know, I made it through. And internal affairs, they used to follow me and everything. I remember I got called for an investigation. So you're hanging with a convicted felon. They said his name, my man from Rochdale. They said he had your business cards. And they, like, they got me. And I'm like, yeah, that's my man. I gave out 3,000 business cards. Like, mm-hmm. But do you know his sister's a cop? Like, why y'all ain't calling his sister Whoa, in and asking, right, yeah, right. why was you with him on Thanksgiving dinner? Like, mm, right. come on, man, with yeah. this bullshit. Like, yeah, yeah. Y'all just trying it. Y'all yo, straight. I was so clean. I used to tell, I knew they was following me and all kinds. And I used to tell them, like, y'all wasting y'all time. You got cops doing some real shit. Leave me. I'm good. I did the pivot. I'm not going back to none of that mm-hmm. nonsense how did they, no more. How did they do all that investigation and still didn't find none of that shit from the past? Like, that's cr- crazy part that's, to me. So... After two years, you a tenured cop. Mm-hmm. So after two years, I'm on. Yeah. So now y'all find something, that's your business. I'm mm. already on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But find what? So what if, let's say, I say I ain't do it. I just made it up. As I always say, like my book, tomorrow I say, all that stuff is fake. Like, you can't even prove none of it. Right. Mm-hmm. So what, what are we talking about? Mm. <laughs> Unless it's a murder, yeah. which I've never admitted to, yeah. seeing or being a part of, mm-hmm. that's the one with no statute of limitations. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. All this stuff, a little robbery, you shot somebody, it grades them, and all. Like, nah, all that shit over. Mm. Yeah, that's 25 that's years old, 30 years old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But again, remember, like you said, I wasn't convicted. So mm-hmm. even if you knew that's I right, did, that's a yeah, fact. Yeah, all yeah. of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have nothing on her. Yeah. I had no the ill shit is the perception yeah. is ill. That's why listening to your story, my whole perception changed about you, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I'm thinking like, like yo, yo, this dude this punk ass cop. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, 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 Six black cops, but then we got three different, um, like ABC squad. So it might have been like two of us. And once in a while, I worked with a. I've never seen cop. two really two black cars. I mean, two black D's driving well, around you know, nothing like that. Had, yeah, Very so rare. Like, I worked in Harlem. You see shit Harlem like that. Harlem is heavy with black the cops. So. Cops, mm. Brooklyn. You know, I worked. In, I was. They never tried to get Brooklyn. you to do narcs and stuff like that. Of course they did. Hmm. They asked me. I was a cop in 114, working in Queensbridge for three years as an undercover. The sergeant came and was like, hey, guy, you know, you really look good. We would love for you to come. And I said, you trying to kill me? <laughs> you going to tell me you want me to go to Queensbridge as an undercover and buy some fucking drugs? I've been working for three years like they not going to know the fuck. <laughs> That's a fight, right? I said, how do I do it? You a sergeant? So yeah. I said, how do I do it? He said, nah, you got to study, take a test. I said, I read. <laughs> That's the shit I want. I want you, give him, you give our orders. That's the shit I want to do. Because mm. they ain't want me to do that. Then I yeah. rose to, you know. Yeah, because you were you were, you were the highest rank. You, you I think you passed rank. You was like the deputy inspector. Yeah, I was deputy like. inspector, yeah. I, I don't know the what the titles and how high mm-hmm. that, what yeah, that no, really that's means up there. and that, stuff that, like yeah. that. It's like the second rank of executive, and then it's inspector, then chief. Yeah. Oh, so How do you yeah, get I'm, to that with your... With your Attitude towards the force and the, and, right. and the people within the force and the people who don't yeah. like you. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, I'm a fucking hustler. Right. <laughs> that I know. <laughs> yeah. So what happened is, you have to figure out who the players are, who you could align yourself with. Mm. That's gonna because once you make captain, it's no more test. Now you gotta do what they call discretionary promotions. 
So I said, I pegged out like two or three dudes. They was all white. So they gonna be my friends, mm. right? I lined myself up. And they ended up being really nice guys. Actually, one of them funeral um, is Monday. He was the chief of the department, the highest ranking uniform member. Mm. He was, a, we call him rabbis. He was like my rabbi. He was a good dude. Mm. Real good dude. Because they all ain't bad. Right. He was a good dude. He knew I was a little crazy. He was like, Corey, you got to cut your cornrows off. What are we going to do with you? You right. got to cut your cornrows off. You know, they're trying to make me do the yeah. part. Make me. <laughs> How long you slap, had them? We <laughs> got to slap this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this don't represent the department right. type thing. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I just was different. The walk, the talk, the slang, mm. everything was like. Dudes coming in, cuffs him. I'm like, son, you good? What's wrong? Right? They're like, what are you, what are you saying to him? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying to him? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's just the lingo of yeah. the streets. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> be easy. Yeah, be easy. <laughs> they be like, no, son, even know. And dude, be like 45-year-old cop. I ain't your fucking son. I'm like, Sarge, <laughs> He's not calling you his son. Right. Right. That's how they talk to each other. So... I was connected, but I would have been a good undercover, but I ain't want none of that. I, mm. I just came from that life. I don't want to be, yeah, I don't yeah, want to do yeah. none of that. And I have friends that was undercovers. I have, I have boys that was undercover, and they started seeing me going through the ranks. They was like, we could do that? I said, yeah, we could do that. Y'all motherfuckers running around here buying drugs. Put your life at risk. Mm. My man Stoney got shot in the chest on Ooh. a buying bus. He got shot. I know mad people got shot at raw. They making you sniff coke and all. I said, y'all crazy. Take the test. This shit's written on the eighth grade level. Ain't no big words in there like pseudo for liquor lightus barbay, which is a long ass word for right, shaving. Right, right. What, <laughs> <you doing? laughs> what you doing? Yeah, it's, a dumb, it's all <laughs> at the time, <laughs> place of coming. Right, right, right. Like, y'all buggy. Y'all buying drugs? I'm reading a book. They couldn't stop me. Mm. I was just so they used to do stuff to me to like put me in position like, I'm going to. um they give me an undesirable assignment, like I gotta go to the hospital with a prisoner. It's a dead body, put me on a dead body. And I used to be like, all right, I'll take it. It got to the point where I volunteered because I'd be like, yo, let me get my books. And I would sit there for eight hours and read. They didn't even understand. They was creating a monster. Mm. It's like, I'm gonna sit on this dead body. This old white cop told me, for the, if you ever been in a stench of a dead body that's been there for a week or two, it's something you never forget. And this old cop told me, just burn coffee grinds and it'll go away. So I was get some coffee grinds and just burn them right in the pot, no water, nothing. Burn them and it take the smell away. I shouldn't be saying that because people be killing people. You know what I'm saying? I just gave them a cigarette. You heard it here first. You know, like apartment, apartment one B, be like, yo, it's the smell coming out. That be that burning coffee grinds. I smell like coffee. I smell man coffee. Strong coffee right there. <laughs> yeah, so that's how, and I would just like study, study, study. Mm. It kind of changed for you once you uh, you had an incident in Freeport. <laughs> Freeport, oh my god! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it it kind of changed, man, because yeah. you was like the—I don't want to say the golden kid, but you was definitely on the ascension. Yeah, yeah, I had a rocket ship on my back, and the mayor. Mayor Hardwick from Freeport asked me to come out there and speak on his behalf because he wanted to hire somebody outside of the police department, which happens normal around. But yeah. he's a black mayor, one first black Hope man. still your friend. They hated him. Ah, we cool. <laughs> they hated him. He never came to my, um, he never backed me. Mm. But I don't, you know, yeah, it's yeah, not personal. Yeah. It is what it is. But I went to support him and I did a speech. And Obama just got elected. And it was a raucous crowd. It was like 98%. If you know Freeport, half is black, half is white. The white side was at this meeting. The whole white side. Oh so God. I go there and I was, my name, Corey Pegues, whatever. I believe he should be able to hide from whatever. They was like, boo! <laughs> and I was like, listen, they pissed me off, which is usually I never let people piss me off. <laughs> I was like, look, we're doctors, we're lawyers, politicians, police, and by the way, the president of the United States of America. Boom! Slap my hand and walk. I was like, oh, you motherfucker! <laughs> 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 police department was mad. Oh, they was mad at me. <laughs> wow. they was mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> from, that, from that speech, <laughs> shit went down. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but yo, sometimes you gotta slap them like yeah, yo, yeah, like we yeah. got these jobs too, man. Like what we talking about? Well, I'm just giving a personal opinion on something I really believe yeah. in. <laughs> I mean, I guess because you're in a position of power, that's what makes him upset. Because it's like you can't just say this is just Joe Blow. This no, this ain't Joe Blow. This is Joe somebody. Exactly. This got a name in a uh-huh. position, mm-hmm. and white people respect titles, and you got a title. Yeah, but they don't respect your title when you look like me and you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They think like something just give. That's when they show you how much that title really means. Yeah, they show you know what the title saying? really like means. Me right. Getting. Commanding officer of the 67 precinct, which is the second most violent precinct in the city in East Flatbush, Brooklyn. I'm the first black commander since inception in 1865. You Hold know. on. So the police department for real. People were thinking like they gave it to me because I'm black. I'm like, well, why don't you all black motherfuckers before me? Well, like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I got the golden child. Yeah. <laughs> but Ray Kelly saw something in me. Mm-hmm. He believed in me, you know, because I never really kissed ass. Yo, it's funny. I remember before there was a black chief, and he was like, "They looking to do something with you, but they they don't know what's going on with you and Eric Adams." So prior to this, Mayor Eric Adams, this polished guy, do I hope I don't really recognize? That's not Mayor. Ad- I mean, that's not Eric Adams from Brooklyn. No, he said that's not who he recognized. That's what I mean. Right, that's right, not Eric Adams guy. from Brooklyn. I don't, I don't know who this guy is, <laughs> but uh, we was on the streets like. We was 100 blacks in law enforcement who cared, like, on the police neck and the whole mm. nah. I don't know what happened to him, but I guess that's what politics do. So they was uncomfortable with me and his relationship. Like, they wasn't even going to, like, promote me or anything. Wow. And they grabbed this chief. God bless him. He died. His name was Chief Gianelli. He was chief of patrol. He grabbed me in a closet one day at a party. He was like, I need to talk to you. He grabbed me in a closet. He said, what the fuck is going on with you and Eric Adams? I said, chief. That's my man. Like, I can't deny. Like, that's my man. You know, I was in 100 blocks. I said, but Eric can't make me do no dumb shit. Eric ain't feeding my fam. Like, that's my man. But he can't. Yeah. He don't control the strings of me. I ain't no puppet with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two weeks later, I got that assignment. Wow. Because, like, you have to, like, speak up. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. So yeah. he went to Ray Kelly because that was his man. Right. Mm-hmm. Police commissioner was right, like, yo, right. Corey checks out. Wow. Mm. Wow. You looked him in his eye and told him the truth. I, yeah, man. Cause I wasn't going to deny the friendship. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If y'all going to judge me on him, like, that shit ain't fair. Judge me on me. He can't make me do nothing crazy, okay? Yeah. I promise you that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to feed my babies. What do you think of policing now in New York City? Because I feel like looking at... Your story, man. The way you did community policing, it was almost like, uh, what what do they call that? They, you, that should be that should be the archetype of how you do this shit. The blueprint, the exactly. blueprint. You know what I'm saying? They want. Listen, I'm telling them I'm available. Y'all can. <laughs> <laughs> I can't no, help but it for it, free. It, it, it's true though because you not only was you there, but it looked like you really connected with the community. Listen, I had no, I, I had no chance but to connect with the community because my babies, look at my babies, is black and brown. Yeah. So how I'm gonna go to work? Like this is what I hate with black cops, y'all. You want to see some Negroes? Get in the room full of black cops. It'll blow your mind. These Negroes are out of control. They fall right in line with the bullshit. Mm. And I never was a part of it. Mm. I be looking at them like. You serious? You really acting like that? You crazy? Yeah. Like, I'm going to take, make sure my baby, I'm not going to break the law or anything. Yeah. You know, little, the, the dude with the, the, the yeah, crack yeah, in his yeah. pocket. Should I have done it? Nah, maybe. Was I wrong? I don't know. So, but you, it sounded like. You know what like I'm saying? To, but yeah. I'm going to get an opportunity. Now, yeah. if he had a gun, I'm telling you, I would have locked him up. Mm. Yeah. If he had a gun, mm. he had 10 pounds of crack. Like, I don't even know if this shit was personal use. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Nice it wasn't day. enough. Yeah. You, it just, you know, you know. Waste your time doing all that paperwork. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Was you aware that the, like that's because? But you gotta live for something or die for nothing. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the only thing I have is Scarface say right. It's my right. world and my balls. Right. And mm-hmm. I ain't cutting for nobody. Mm. I look in the mirror. I gotta be a man every day. I can't be a man every day. Then go to work and be a bitch. Like. That don't work for me. That's a fact. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I've always like been me. Ain't no 
fucking up, yeah. down, Dude. go sideways. I'm, I was like, I'm black or white. People even like me and they hate my fucking gut. Yeah. I don't even know what gray is. I don't even like wearing that color. Like, yeah. I don't even know who yeah. Greg is. <laughs> like, Greg out of Greg. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, like, I like to deal with people like, you fuck with me, you fuck with me. You don't. Like, I'm good with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm telling you, it's a tremendous amount of black cops. Y'all know cops. Yeah. They think they, y'all think they cool. I'm telling you, when you see them as cops, said, you wouldn't even know who they are. Wow. Mm. They absolutely conform and turn. Like, oh I'm not standing God. there letting nobody get no extra hit. Do you got that any... That don't work. Do you, yeah. Oh, you hit somebody you extra? No, no, nah, nah, I ain't mean to cut you off. Do you got any regrets? Maybe the Freeport thing. Mm. That's probably it. Mm. Mm. Only because... So the backdrop of that, I was there for like three hours. It was like four or five times. I was like, I gotta go, man. And I overstayed my time. And I didn't know that somebody was filming. Oh, If man. I knew somebody was filming, I probably wouldn't have... It wouldn't have came out the way. Well, what you, you, you what you, you what you say? You just said that. That's what Obama. I said. Yeah, 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 but that was at Freeport in front of a bunch of white people. White people. Well, you knew when Obama came in, they hated him. Yeah. So right, that was right, like, right, that right. That was a lightning rod, yeah. and it came out of nowhere. Right, right. He right, said right. the OP yeah. word. Oh, right, we gotta right, go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so. I was about to ask you, uh, was how was the black people? Was it black racist in there? And like, but you don't already Yo, cleared. Nah, but like some, the black the black cops didn't even want to fuck with me. Oh shit! Yeah, like they say, I'm Bob, but they like I'm saying, wait from them. This guy, like, I don't want him to rub off on me. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like, yo, we good with these, we good with them. Mm. I'm like, damn, you going to bar mitzvahs? What is going on with you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now we go. Don't mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. You got the yarmulke on it. Oh my what God. What is going on with you? Like, you wanted to be indoctrinated. You, what? You, you yeah, brought into man. this whole and yo, thing. For me, like, I never even been racist. Yeah. I don't even, like, I like everybody, but if you show me a little bit, I'm going on you all yeah, the way. Yeah, because I remember going to Bayside High School, being bust out Brown versus Board of Education '68, and them white boys used to chase us to the bus every <laughs> single day. Yo, we just had Kenny school. Ennis, and he was saying the same thing. I promise you, they chased us to the bus. They friends, they come with their Mustangs and hot rods after school. And I was like, yo, why we gotta run? The first day, my man Big Art was like, yo, when the bell rings, you gotta run in the bus. I said, wait, he said, just fucking run to the bus. They was chasing. You know what I don't remember is the principal, the teachers ever helping us. That's what's wow. crazy. Mm. We just was on our own running like, oh, shit. They throwing bottles. out there watching everything. out the window wow. like, there you go. Right. Like, bet. See how much you get your bus out first. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look how fast he run. <laughs> <laughs> Ten on the kid with the book bag. <laughs> Yo, you know they fast. And you know, for, absolutely, for absolutely no reason. And y'all all see that video. Y'all see that video that circulates on um, the internet with Rosedale? The old with the, like in the 70s or yeah, 80s. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the, how it was. The Rosedale. But that was only in the 70s? It was like the late 70s or early 80s. Damn, mm. that, was that racist over there in Rosedale like that? It was all white. Yeah. But that was just in the, in the, that was all white. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's how I had to run into them. They was chasing me to the bus in Bayside. Howard Beach was like that. Hell yeah. Howard yeah. Beach wow. was like that. Then that's where you said Hawkins was? Oh, Griffin. Or was that? Um, Griffin. Griffin. Yusuf Hawkins is Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there something that happened in Howard Beach? Griffin. Oh, Griffin. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Griffin that got was actually on uh, Benson Hurst, I think, over yeah. there. Yeah. Benson Hurst was the same I didn't way, didn't come out here at that yeah. time yet. Yo, it was crazy, but I'm telling you, man, you want to see some Negroes, you go to a, a police function with a bunch of black cops. Right. Mm. And white cops, you just gonna um, lose it. Uh, blow your mind. Shocking. They start talking funny and everything. I'm like, they <laughs> <laughs> get that Kanye <laughs> voice. <laughs> <laughs> I like, yo, what did you tell me? We're the normal. What happened? Man, what happened? Like, that's you? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. You, you yeah. gotta be in there quiet. Like, word. That's so I would have like up. black uh, supervisors. Like when I was a young cop and a sergeant, they'd be like, yo, Corey. You need to tone it down. Uh, and I'm looking at it. But I understood because they came in like in the 70s and the 60s. Master them whipped them out. Yeah. They was already whipped out. Mm -hmm. And now they're trying to put that on me. And I was like, 
No, no, we different now. Yeah, we ain't doing that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. We don't that's do that no more. We hip hop. We hip hop. We yeah, yeah. That's a fact. It's different now. Yeah. So I had to kind of give them their little do, like, but I ain't listen to them. But it's like, funny because changing. It's funny because your past made you a good cop. Yeah. Of absolutely, because I mean, I'm from the streets. So you I understood the streets. Yeah, That's I what it was. Yeah. That's what made it ill. Everybody wow. in the streets ain't bad. Like yeah, they want to yeah, yeah, come. Yeah. They come in our community. Everybody, everybody ain't bad. Like you, you know can see saying? a situation and go where somebody who's not from your neighborhood. They see them screaming. They thinking that they about to come to blows. And you like, right. nah, that, that's just how they... That's how they talk, right? right, right. Yeah. Like, like the Africans across the street so animated. Right, right, right. right. Ain't nothing like the Africans or right, Dominicans right. That's talking. Right. They that's yeah, right. they're screaming that's at each other. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Now, you know, send you on your merry way. Did you want it? Did, I mean, did they, it was like a, what no, was it like so a what happened, or? nah, I had the two back surgeries and I asked the doctor, like, it was two things. Can I still be a cop and can I play golf? And he was like, work on your golf game. God. Mm, so wow. that day I told my wife, I was like, yo, bring my laptop to the, to the hospital. And that's the day I started writing my book. Mm. I wrote my own book. I don't, yeah, y'all don't know Oh, that's know your that. words. I wrote my own book. It's beautiful. I wrote man. my own book. So when I signed the deal with Simon Shoot, they brought in a New York Times bestselling author to Jack. If you would have read what I wrote, uh, you'd be asleep on page two. Right, <laughs> right, I mean, right. I'm a hustling yeah. a cop. I ain't. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah, but right, he right. just took everything I wrote and flipped yeah, it around. Yeah, right, right. Mm-hmm. He, he, made, it, he made it interesting. Yeah, like yeah. you see that first opening I read? Yeah, yeah. I would have never done it. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. yeah. Because that's like. 25 years. Yeah, you know, I started yeah. 1968. I was born. Today is 2000, whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah. So um, it worked out. It did it. Yeah. And, and so you, I was good with it. It was like, if I was still there now, I'd probably be the police commissioner or chief of department for sure. If that's not a here fact. somewhere else, the commissioner or chief. Yeah. Or that's shit. a fact. Like, yeah, I believe that. I do nah, believe that. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So you don't... Um, they don't, so nobody hits you up for consulting about uh, police and Oh, stuff? yeah, yeah. I do a lot of consulting. I'm oh. actually a TV personality. I'm a consult. Um, I'm a, one of the legal analysts weekly on Court TV and the Law and Crime Network. That's dope, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fucking that amazing, amazing, bro. That's fucking yeah. amazing. Because I'm like, you got a lot of game in there that need to be expressed. Yeah, and but me, like me and Greg that. gonna talk about doing this podcast called The Street, The Law, Two Worlds, One Man. But we got to get it right because it's right. a lot. I want to be able to talk about all of these incidents that's happening in America and give mm. my perspective. Yeah, yeah. As a, that's you know, dope. That's a, dope. These sex folks. So we're going we're gonna to work on that. Yeah, that's real so dope. it got to be a right situation. Tell me about a, a, a recent uh, incident that kind of got you, that you would want to express about as far as policing goes. Well, I, so every day I'm talking about answers. There's so many damn nutballs in America, y'all. Mm. Cases y'all don't even know about. Mm-hmm. So once I'm doing this TV thing, okay. they give me national cases, like people killing their babies. They doing all kind of crazy. But a national one you know about is the Murtaugh case. Y'all all know about the Murtaugh case. He killed his wife and his son down in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's a huge case mm. that I've been on the forefront talking about. He got convicted. He coming up um, for another some mm, other charges mm. and he just pled guilty for this is a crazy like people crazy man they do a lot of crazy stuff like the dude stuff. that just jumped on a judge <coughs> yo that, that Superman that's yo, my oh man my Superman you see what he brought I, back, I was just talking about that on court TV um, this week yeah that was so crazy. they asked me when you, you look at it the schematic why is the court officer standing next to the lawyer and not standing next to the defendant anytime right. there's yeah. a sentence is Y'all know the court officer. So you talking about the court officer, the lawyer, Superman, desk, <laughs> chairs. Right. I don't know how the hell that guy. But you how, know how big the damn bitch is? Y'all know how the bitch is. Yeah. Yeah. You know this? You cleared that bitch. Yeah, yeah, he cleared it. His whole body cleared That's a fact. Where, where was the court officer though? She <laughs> didn't even get a chance Remember, to move fast enough. She didn't get there fast enough. Cause she was yeah, there because the lawyer. lawyer was over there kicking him. I'm like, where the court officer's at? He's on the side still. He's still in the back. And then they gonna bring him in court the other yeah, day. Yeah, we seen him right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. now, now y'all got nineteen yeah, court yeah. officers. Yeah, that's a fact. 
had the net on his face, had oh, the little, word. The little yeah. word, word. gloves on. Crazy. So, the, yeah, the, the judge I'm couldn't act like a jerk opinion. like that, though. Let's, let's not act like that wasn't there. Let me tell you. Yo, you, you, oh, you saw my, you. You saw my comments? No, I didn't oh, see okay. that. I'm just no, the my observation. So when I was giving my analysis, I told the host, I think it was Judy, I said, listen, I'm looking at this from two perspectives. One, the judge probably should have stayed professional and don't make that Absolutely. remark that yes. she said. Yes. She was like, oh, I'm about to. He's like, yeah, I'm about to put these fucking paws on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> she should have been professional. Like, the, his lawyer says something. say, like, all right, we'll take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Let me, yes. Now I'm going to give my report. She want to be fancy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he's going to have to I learn a different way. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't know so, how he got it, though. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> she should have been professional. Yeah. We're in a professional setting. Or she knew she was going to throw the book at him. She should already had contacted the bailiffs. Like, listen, make sure the court officers are around. Remember, he already came from, they had a psychological evaluation on him. He already been doing all of this crazy stuff. So he is already off then already. He was yeah. already off. Then yeah. why is she talking about him like, you know, like, you know, that was crazy. She, he, he told you that, though. Yeah. Just thought she was good. She ain't no Superman was there. <laughs> <laughs> that dude shook the whole... <laughs> yeah. Anytime crazy. you get on this bench and think of saying something like that, you will think of me. That's yeah. what he said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. What do you know about, uh, what was it, Edward Raymond? Was you? Yeah, that's my, that's my oh, little Oh, you do man. know him. Okay. Yeah, that's my little man, Edmund Raymond. He got a book out now. He's been speaking out on a lot of issues that's intimately involved with the police and the races, mm -hmm. some of the races. Yeah, like a lot of this stuff is like I said, it's just been there forever. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to like pull back. You got to. So for me, when people ask me, what do you think about the criminal justice system? I'm talking about police correction. I think you need to take like an atomic bomb, blow the whole thing up, and start ground up. Because mm. like you can't fix something that's broken. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that broken for 100 right. years. Yeah. And then say, you're just going to put a Band-Aid on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like Eric Adams was doing with this freaking migrant issue. Like you oh can't just God. put a, a Band-Aid yeah. on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a huge issue. Yeah. So until they really... Really ready. It's almost been like an alcoholic. My name is Corey Pegues. So I'm an alcoholic. I need help. Unless policing is ready to say, listen, we've been based on racist tendencies for 100 years, and we're ready to pull back the sheet and try to give everybody a fair chance. If they're not doing that, you're never going to fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's Stay ready for that. <clears throat> oh, you, um, you had a lawsuit or something, too, with... PD or something, right? Yeah, I had a hundred and twelve million dollar lawsuit. What's the process on that? Like, how's that going? And what's, what was that about exactly? <laughs> yeah, because they legally came to my house when I they put me in the front page of the newspaper. Oh, right, 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 right. right, right. A bunch of cops to my house and took my took guns your and guns stuff. and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. So, seen it in the papers. So out of being angry, I'm like, I'm gonna sue these dudes. And then after like two years, I was like, fuck that, because some stuff you gotta let go. Yeah, yeah. like. Cause that court, you be in that bitch forever. Yeah, like I'm not. I mean, the easiest thing in America is get, get you some gun. more guns. Yeah. That's easy. Y'all know I ain't just sitting around here. That's yeah. it. the easiest <laughs> thing is to get a gun. Mm -hmm. So I just sat and really thought about yeah. it and was like, it ain't worth it. Cause I don't even need that stress no more. Yeah, I pivoted off that. I, you know, out of anger, can a lawyer. Yeah, da, 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 da. I ain't gonna fight these crazy white boys in Nassau County over some guns and I can get guns. That's the easy part. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. I, I just, just forget that, man. Okay. Okay. I need my sanity more than all of that. It's true, because that courtroom, man, that shit is just, it's long. Yeah. It's long. Uh -huh. right? There's no, and they, and their money, those those lawyers are on payroll, so it's not even like you got to right. come out their pocket. That's, yeah. on pay. That's in the budget already. Right. So, exactly. this shit is a job for them. Exactly. They'll ride this bitch until the wheels fall off. Exactly. They die, the next person come off. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Crazy. So, you never, so they, this is what they do. I mean, you know, if, they don't, if they're not willing to settle or something like that. They, didn't, they couldn't touch your pension, though, if I'm not mistaken. Nah, they couldn't touch my pension. So, <laughs> I'm glad you said that. So, let's put this on the podcast so people know. In the history of New York, NYPD, they've never taken anybody's pension. Think about it. The only way you can take somebody's pension, you have to go in front of a judge and have an articulable reason on why. You can't go and say, after... 21 and a half years of good service. He wrote this book and said he did this in 1986. Mm -hmm. That shit don't work. 
judge me like get your ass out of yeah. here you mean to tell me he went all the way to the top y'all promoted him all of these yeah, times yeah. and now he retired and you find yeah. this out y'all did an investigation right like get yeah. out of the court like, that's they yeah. fault right so they they homework yeah. and shit. it's funny because a lot of people don't even think i got a pension by the way, they already gave me over a million dollars in tax-free Ooh, money. So, no so tell all of them a hater's no no <laughs> Tell them a hater's jam. Tell them that. 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 Tell it's crazy because the paper's trying to say it in a different way. Yeah, well, it's the paper. Saying? Yeah, the paper yeah. had me yeah. dead. To run. I was dead, yeah. man. Word, like, word. People was coming to me, sending me prayer cards and everything. Word, and I'm word. like, yo, I'm not all this hustling. I'm not jumping off no rooftop without a parachute. Yeah. yeah. I knew when I went on Combat Jack, God bless Combat Jack, we all know Combat Jack. Yeah. I was trying to get a book deal. Yeah. And I couldn't get a deal. I was trying for two years trying to get a deal. So I'm like, yo, Combat got the number one hip hop podcast. I'm about to jump off the fucking roof. My <laughs> lawyer, Ed Woods, God bless his dad. I made sure Ed wasn't there because Ed would have had me in the chokehold. <laughs> so I go on the podcast and I go, Frame King, that guns, just drunk, that right. We drinking Bel Air. I'm <laughs> my eyes. Oh, oh my God. God. Man, I've hit the front page of the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I remember that shit. But that what people don't know is three o'clock. So fast, a week before that, me, Leon from Five Heartbeats, Ed, and I think Doc. D dot, we hanging out. So it's like 3 30, 4 in the morning. We in Clinton Hills going to a bar. And Ed says hi to everybody. So this is nondescript white guy on the corner. Ed goes, say hi. He look over me. He said, Yo, yo, see, he's an agent. I'm like, another agent. Like we coming from Run DMC concert. Yeah. Like, yo, come on, man. Let me go to the bar. It's almost four o'clock. Go meet him. Next day, he's like, he had told the agent my story. And the agent was like, yo, send me his transcripts. So he called me, sitting there. I said, I ain't sending that dude this money. He was like, no, send him a transcript. So I was like, on a Friday. So I hit the paper on Monday. We had sent him the transcript. He called 3 o'clock, said, yo, I'm signing him. You can't get a big deal unless you have an agent. It's almost like the music industry. What, did you need an A&R or something? Like, that's how it go. You can mm -hmm. self-publish, but you ain't walking in none of these without. Uh, yeah. That's how I got the big deal. Mm. The ages. So while I'm on the newspaper, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the top ten publishers in the world is offering me deals. So we had an auction wow. on a Friday from twelve to two that's to up. bid on the rights for my story. That's yeah, that's God damn, man. I love it. I that's love it. And I couldn't say anything about because remember, Rupert Murdoch is a multi. He's a billionaire. Right. Mm. I can't fight the New York Post. You know, yeah, you're I not could, gonna win that. So I'm telling my agent, like, we gotta get this book out. He's like, calm down, Tiger. It's a two year process. I couldn't. So let me show you how policies work. The book comes out. We send out the, the teasers, the daily news, because they're in competition. The daily news signs me, gives me a deal. Well, I forgot how much they paid. They paid me to get the exclusive. They did a two page spread on me. Ooh. <laughs> About the book, Ooh, <laughs> man. Nice. That's uh, bro. You done, yeah. yeah. All for y'all, gift the guy, B. Yeah, that's all all for you, man. Yo, like that wasn't that's hustler, Ill. man. You just gotta hustle. That's, <laughs> Ill, <bro. laughs> and that's how you all listening to the part. You listening to the audio book, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I get the audio. So I sign the deal, and my agent's like, Audible wants to give you a deal. I'm like, all right, whatever it is, few thousand, whatever. So he sent me some voices. So if you know anything about Audible, like there's like professionals that do it. Yeah. They sound the same. So send me the voices. I was like, yo, this ain't gonna work. Send me some black voices. You see me black voice? There's worse than a white voice. <laughs> wow. I was like, can I do this shit myself? <laughs> he was like, yeah, we gonna pay you whatever we, you wanna give it a shot? They sent me to a studio in Manhattan. Mm. I was there three days, eight hours a day, and I had to read the entire book. I could imagine wow. man, that was like. Yeah. But I'm glad I, I you had did to that. make sure, like, running down the street, you yeah. can't be like, and he was running yeah, yeah, yeah. down the yeah. street. Like, it's shit. I was yeah, like, right, yo, right, right. I got to do this because yeah. I know when to reflect, when to come yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give an it's example. It's my words. When I was listening to the Freeway Rick Ross book, I'm like, I like the book, but this is a white he man. 
He didn't do it. I was like, right. I can't listen to this shit. I, this, this feels, this doesn't feel authentic to me because you hearing a white guy talking about a uh, black woman shooting another black yeah, person. It, like, it don't nah, work. B, I'm not doing this right here. B. I got to put. But that the audio down. book lovers was tearing me up online. That people that write their own book shouldn't talk their own, do their own story. <laughs> Cause they bullshit, used to, man. They used to hear yeah. them dumbass voices. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> That's bullshit. Cause fifty, plenty of people do it. Robert Greene do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Fifty Cent did it. Mm -hmm. Plenty of people do it on yeah. Andre Iguodala. You sound better like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I personally it's, it's think it sounds better. It's your voice. Right. Your voice you exactly. It's more yeah. authentic. Yeah, nah. Listen, I think that's they had already cut me the checks. That's a fact. That's a fact. I don't care about no reviews, man. Oh man. Oh, Buck, you got anything? Look at me, King. <laughs> yo, bro, you got to... Yo, this is the best... I hate to say this, though. Yeah. Right. You got the best story we had on our podcast, bro. Yeah. That's I'm good, telling man. you for I me. Like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk, yeah. Talk. You were so intriguing. You're humble. You answered our questions. You didn't shy away from nothing. Yeah. And, and that's so dope. And your story is so inspiring, bro. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You will, bro. I, no, I I'm, that, I'm bro. very intrigued. I couldn't even know what to ask you. I just right, listened right, to this right, like... Right, right, right. Yo, you right, dope, yeah, bro. Yeah. You dope, bro. Yeah, you my, dope. Whole, my whole goal you had is mad shit to ask you before you came, but you kind of yeah. answered everything. That's a fact. Yeah. Like, yo, that's a fact. There was no purpose to answer because you already I put it there. Yo, Whoa. I'm just trying to inspire some of these young kids that's out there doing oh. the same shit that we did yeah. in the streets and just let them know, yo, it's a better way, man. Yeah. I already did that. Now I'm giving you the blueprint. Like, there's some other shit we could yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some yeah. new mistakes. Yeah. Clothes, real estate, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, and it's not even like, about being a cop. It's about right. being something. Exactly. And, you know what I'm saying? Positive and do, do your shit. That's you, you all will, I'm you trying to tell these will, kids, bro. man. You, so I'm speaking on that Young Thug case almost every, you know, every oh, week man, at what least. what do you think of that? That's, I'm speaking yeah, on that every... <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think he's going to jail. Mm. I think he's going to jail. So he's looking like it. Then they got know, somebody he, testifying or something. Yeah, but he, he, I don't know. You see his testimony? Yeah, he was like, well, he's scared to yeah, death up yeah, there. He, he, he ain't really he, 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 he uncomfortable. He's yeah. he yeah, very uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 they might shoot him in the foot. They ain't gonna let him live. They ain't <laughs> <gonna> <laughs> let him live. <laughs> He ain't saying nothing. He, everybody's waiting. Yeah. But it's crazy because, you know, the DA usually prep you. Yeah. I'm like, it's no way he answers those questions like that because he's going to understand him and man, huh? He yeah. arguing with the DA and fact. everything. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, man. You know, we all know you do a crime more th with more than one person. Yeah. You know. that It's hard to beat like, that conspiracy, man. Yo, mm, let me yeah. tell you. Nobody likes Uncle Rico. Nah. It's the worst thing. Mm -hmm. Rico is the worst thing that you yeah. ever mm -hmm. want to get. Because, like, right now, they be like, yo, you was in there talking to them on the podcast. Like, all oh, y'all going down. Like, yo, I just did an interview. What are you talking about? Yeah. I don't know these dudes. I just did that. Yeah. Yo, and Rico is the worst thing yeah, yeah. that can happen to you. So, I think he's going to get some time, man. Yeah, we'll see. Like it, man. But, uh. You got anything else, G? <laughs> uh, thanks for coming out. <laughs> God bless. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I like you when you hear yeah. me yeah. with the rest of the city. I, I, yeah, yeah. Yo, I, I don't really have much, much more. I really appreciate yeah. you coming by, blessing us with your story, man. We really appreciate Word. it, man. You know what yeah. I mean? So, uh, yeah, man, all the best to you. We need some of those books. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I'm, you know. I got to place an order anyway next week. So, so definitely, I got man. Because your, we'll your keep college, in, I just, they, I got to we'll, drop we'll some We'll keep more. in contact with you Yo. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, for so, sure. You know, Anytime y'all have yeah. any questions or any legal issues, big case come down, y'all need me. Come through. Speak about it. Oh, we good. Shit, hell yeah. We Yo, good. Corey, man. Thank you for coming, man. Like, you didn't have to do this. You could have been in your bed. I know you got a lot of family that you My do. son got a game at 8 o'clock. It's 15 eight. minutes to 8. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, My little son. Yeah. Just thank you, man. I, I, I can't say no more than just thank you. You know what I'm saying? You came off the strength of G. And we appreciate it, man.
For real, for real. You know what nah, I'm saying? yo, I appreciate y'all brothers, man, because y'all in tune with the streets. The streets got your ear. Like I said, y'all had a couple of my people on here. No y'all doubt. only got to just keep doing this work because y'all going to blow. It only take one person to see it to make it just y'all going to be out of here. Right. We hoping right. it's y'all you, for real. See, <laughs> we hoping y'all this is it. See, we hoping this is it. No, right it's, not, it's yeah. not really yeah. about my interview. It's I know, just I about know. the right person is seeing yeah. y'all, believing in y'all. That's a fact. Yeah. Seeing y'all work. And then y'all going to be out of here, That's man. But don't forget the little people when y'all blow up. No, no, oh, man. Right. Cut it out. <laughs> out. Yo, this is I Detox. That's Bug Out. That's G Vast. It's the one and only Corey Pagays. It's the Thanks Don't for asking forget show. Prom. You forgetting Prom. Prom. He, he, you know, Prom can kill my fucking ass, man. My bad, Prom. My bad, yo. That's Prom on the boards. We got golf over there. That's right. Yo, it's the Thanks for Asking show. Yo, we out. Peace. Yo, what's up? This is Corey Pegues, former NYPD executive, former member of the Supreme Team. I'm here for the Thanks for Action podcast. Check them out. Peace.